Hi, I'm Ryan LaPlante. And I'm Tyler Hewitt. And we are the crazy people who created both Garbage Town the Movie Podcast and Dum Dums and Dragons. And we are super excited to announce that we're starting a podcast production company called Garbage Productions. So if you head over to patreon.com slash garbage productions, you can actually subscribe for as little as $1 and you can get some pretty cool stuff. Yeah, you can actually help support the show and help us get made. For a dollar a month, you get advance notice on all the upcoming movies on Garbage Town, so you can suffer through them yourself. You get advance notice on guests coming up on dd and so you have an idea of where that's headed, and you have access to our community and comments. For additional money, you get even more input, even more say, and you're even more a part of the shows. We definitely want to hear from you, so go over there, check it out, and we look forward to hearing from you soon. Yeah, patreon.com slash garbage productions. Become a garbage person with us. Welcome back to Dum Dums and Dragons, where improvisers who've never roleplayed before journey into the world of Dungeons and Dragons. I am the Grand Wizard Bukaki, your host. Previously, our heroes agreed to make a delivery for the corpulent Carmine Falstaff. Along the way, they were ambushed by goblins whom they interrogated, with Alan and Quinny's goblin dying under the question. On their way to the goblin's cave, Alan tells Butthole that she is in fact a woman, not a man. Can Butthole survive this embarrassment? Can they all survive a cave full of goblins? Find out on Dum Dums and Dragons! What about the god of motherhood? A man? Fie upon you! <laughs> what? Why couldn't it be a man? Why must it be a man? You speak as a man to me, Alan. You are a man, and you are a man, and you both speak to me so disappointingly. Now seems um, like a good time um, to address I this. You should probably bring this up. I, I'm a woman. I, I know that the name's confusing. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> but I just, I just figured that the, the long flowing hair, along with other features, m- maybe gave it away. But Do you know I, what? I mean, I realize that I'm half elf. This you're still making assumptions about gender and what it demands of all of us. This proves I'm making assumptions? No, but she is. To assume that long hair means one must be female? To assume that being a god means one must be male? These confusions will be something I will teach you about over our journeys together, however short or long they may be. But let us march forth, for I shall not teach you about gender right now. Well done turning that around on her. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, I am a cleric and a scholar. I'm very confused about what to feel right now, but uh, we're going to continue on. Yeah, you just got mansplained. Yes, I did. (laughs) But, like, religiously so. (laughs) Uh, I I start walking up the street. (laughs) Okay. Get that acid ready. (laughs) (laughs) The the stream turns to acid. Um, (laughs) Butthole, having successfully mansplained away his own embarrassment, leaps into the stream as the two of you edge along uh, the path. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to stealth my way in on the path instead of splashing around in the stream. All right. uh, You could roll me a stealth check, but you get the sense that you'll be less stealthy, but... Twelve. Uh, you are about as stealthy as someone walking beside a giant man in armor splashing through a stream could be. I fart. <laughs> Loudly. How deep is the water? Uh, it's about, uh, it's probably up to his knees. Oh, okay. No bubbles. No, no, but this is a two-toner that ends in a question mark because I want to <laughs> know if there's anyone around us. So it's like... Burr, burr, burr. <laughs> Great. So... <laughs> uh, the Alan does not care for this, but I'm getting a kick out of it. <laughs> The, uh, the stream turns um, uh, and the path kind of curve up ahead. Uh, you can, however, see that it opens up to your right and you can see kind of a very dimly lit thing up here. Also, uh, you notice the cave is getting considerably darker. You're fine because you've got dark vision. Yep. Um, I don't believe halflings have nope. dark vision. So how are you guys seeing? I'm going to pull out one of my torches. Uh, I, I do have candles, my explorer's too. pack and oh, okay. use prestidigitation to, to light it. Oh, sweet. Thank you so much. Moonhammer appreciates this. Moonhammer should have brought a torch. <laughs> Moonhammer has ten torches. <laughs> For her chosen <laughs> cleric. <Ten> <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm saving them for a rainy day. <laughs> Why would you use torches on a rainy day? <laughs> could could you see already? Oh, Alan? Yeah, I, I was fine. I was just concerned about you two. I was using my dark vision, so I appreciate where this is coming from. I have a suggestion which sounds like I'm trying to steal your torch, but I'm not. Would you rather I carried the torch in the dark with my heavily armored frame rather than our a uh, genteel uh somewhat Less desirable to be shot with things, wizard. Have we been healed up, by the way? I didn't uh, heal no. you. No. Did There's you heal no us healing. up when you caught up with us? I can heal two things a day, and I already used one when so I almost you died. you can use your hit die to regain uh, hit points when you take a short rest. So if you'd like to retroactively do it, 
will give one time jumping ex- I exception to the that. rule. I rolled a four, which is actually exactly what I need to get back up Great. to my full nine. I rolled a two, so I'm up to a seven. Okay. Great. So I could carry the torch if you would like sure. the first arrow to fly it, okay. not you. I've got that um, good to me. I've got dark common clothes with a hood. I'm going to put those on now. Great. Uh, is there a path that you feel we should journey down, or should I pray to the moon hammer? No. Or? God, no. <laughs> Let's. Uh, looks like this right turn comes up a little sooner. Should we check that out in case someone sneaks up behind us as we check the left yeah, side? Yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna sneak up stealthily towards uh, kind of the, the entrance to mm-hmm, it, yeah, mm-hmm. um, and just kind of peek around the corner, see see if I can see anything. Looking into it, um, up a few uneven stone steps, there's a small dank chamber on the east end of the passage. The cave narrows to a steep fissure at the far end, and it's filled with the stench of animals. You can hear savage snarls and the sounds of rattling chains, and you see there are three wolves chained up just inside the opening. Each wolf's chain leads to an iron rod driven into the base of a stalagmite. One of them has a sign over it that says Goblin Jr. Guys, so we've got wolves, and I think... Um did I hear you yelling something about Goblin Jr. back in the woods? That is correct. Morally, he is now my ward. <laughs> He's your Dick Grayson. Well, if you want to uh, pass me the torch and, and clamber on up. I'll go take a look. Okay. You're going to try and yep. tame the wolf? I pass the torch back to you, by the way. Okay, so I'm up there. I've got the torch. Are, are you with us, Quinny, I would assume? Yeah, I'm kind of hanging around like the perimeter of the light just to, in case we get the drop, I can sneaky. So the wolves are chained. I see three of them. Goblin Jr. It's clear one of them's Goblin Jr. Mm. I can tell which one. There's a little sign nailed into the... Uh, oh, into his... Yeah, into the, the stalagmite. And it's it's like crudely drawn. It's like someone has taken special cares with this one. Here's our problem. I turn to Quinny and, and Alan. Goblin Jr. I can vouch for. <laughs> <laughs> These other two I don't know. Acid spray? I don't <laughs> want to leave them here because if somebody lets them out behind us, we have to fight wolves. I don't know how great Alan will feel about me murdering his wolf friends. Or, or like, I'm so sorry, Alan. This is, <laughs> listen, this is a high-stress moment. I was rude to you earlier. It's on me. Um, but Thank I don't you. know I, how I Goblin Jr. would feel about me murdering the wolves in front of Goblin Jr. How hungry does Goblin Jr. look? They all look pretty hungry. All right, I want to scope out Goblin Jr. for a second because I have uh, insight and animal handling. So I, I want to see how attached Goblin Jr. sees seems to uh, the pack. the pack versus like how hungry. Uh, I get 16. This isn't the first time, uh, certainly as a mercenary, that you've encountered this sort of thing. Um, goblins will often have packs of animals guarding important things or just as, as things they can unleash. However, they tend to be pretty rough with their animals. So despite Goblin Jr. looking a little, uh, you know, like, like perhaps he gets brushed down from time to time, um, they all do seem very hungry. And it seems often that, uh, that the um, goblins probably keep them on the verge of starvation to keep them fierce and hungry okay alan i don't think i can judge you for acid again it's probably better if you both look away i take my war hammer (laughs) two-handed i walk into the cave as soon as you get near the wolves they start snarling and snapping at you the chains aren't like they're not like chained against a wall they're on leads so they start snapping at you as soon as you get close they're all so they're at the edge of their chains towards me good okay so i'm watching because i can't look away i i go to one that is not goblin jr who's at the edge of his chain Two-handed Warhammer, I just brain him right in the fucking head. I don't think you need to roll for that. <laughs> uh, you brain that wolf. Listen, this is a dark moment. Guys, why are you looking? Ah, oh, forget it. Okay. I'm um, keeping a look at I'm not looking. And I just say, sometimes Moonhammer requires dark things of us. And I turn to the other wolf that is not Goblin Jr. And I fucking brain it right in the skull. So they're both oh. dead. <laughs> Goblin Jr. Is, is looking more ferocious and angry. At which point I take the other two wolf bodies with the edge of my Warhammer from a safe distance and push them over so Goblin Jr. can eat them. <laughs> Goblin, Goblin Jr. Jr. Looks, looks at them, snarls, looks back at you and snarls and starts biting at you. It doesn't look like it wants to eat its own kind. You bring any snacks? Any Scooby snacks? <laughs> I've got some jerky. Would that 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 would have been wow? Way to bury the lead on that <laughs> one, Alan. I just realized this is that your I fault, Alan. That I had rations. Uh, out of curiosity, uh, <laughs> butthole. Do you have a do you have an explorer's pack? Yes, it's got ten you days worth of rations. Also have jerky. <laughs> well, no, I don't have jerky. I have yeah, rations. Yeah, rations is dry food suitable for extended travel, including jerky, dried fruit, hardtack, and nuts. Listen, I want to make a point. You wrote that down. Mine just says rations. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to produce rations, and I'm going to like. Put him down and like slide him over to Goblin Jr. Okay, so Goblin Jr. eats them uh, very ravenously and then kind of gives you a quizzical look. And I'm going to take another thing of rations and put him down and push him to Goblin Jr. Okay, he eats those. He seems pretty into that. You want to roll me an animal handling check? Yes, I do. Oh, fuck. Are we about to get a goddamn wolf companion? Uh, no, nope, it's not. Eight. <laughs> no. 
kind of like, huh? You like the jerky, huh? But as soon as you get close, it starts like it looks at the dead wolves next to it and starts like backing up. You can attempt another one or you can leave. I'm attempting another one. I'm, I, I want this fucking. That's a uh, 12. Um, you realize that uh, perhaps what's concerning it is the wolf brain soaked hammer you're holding. So you gently place your hammer against the wall and just approach the dog more carefully with the jerky in hand. And uh, you know, Goblin Jr. seems pretty into that. Nice. Doesn't seem to, you know, like, he, he, he certainly isn't bonded to you now, but he, he's like, all right. He's not snapping at any of you. He's just kind of doing dog things on his chain. Cool. All right. I think we're good to leave him for a bit. All right. And we'll pick him up on the way out. Is this wolf big enough for a hobbit to ride? No, it's just a regular wolf. I mean, a halfling could, like, sit astride it, but it wouldn't be... I said hobbit. I'm not allowed to say hobbit. We're going to get sued. <laughs> <laughs> halfling. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, I don't think you could <laughs> ride it into battle. I'm not interested in keeping this dog. <laughs> it's not for you. It's for duty and for Moonhammer. This is now the dog... Of Moonhammer. Well, and I kneel down and I use thaumaturgy to make the wolf glow. <laughs> I just want to ask is this a human thing? <laughs> <laughs> just in general. Are you asking Quinny or are you asking me? No, I'm, I'm asking you, butthole. No, <laughs> this is a Moonhammer thing. Okay. The wolf licks your face. I hug him. The dog of Moonhammer seems very into that. After that's done, um, the dog kind of like nips at your sleeve and starts pulling you. Oh, cool. Okay. Um, can I pull the rod out of the wall that's on the chain? Yep. Awesome. I'm going to yank that rod out of the wall, so I'm walking the dog of Moonhammer. I'm walking Goblin Jr. now. And I'm like, all right, sh- sh- show us where Timmy's in a well, boy. <laughs> He's leading you to, like, eight more wolves. <laughs> <laughs> Just into a pit of shadows. I'm rolling the dice. Mo- Moonhammer has provided. You chose the path after the stream. We are now here. This is the dog of Moonhammer. We should follow this dog. I, I'm sticking to the perimeter of the torchlight, so if you're moving, I'm moving with you just a little few few paces behind. So um, uh, Goblin Jr. brings you over to a narrow opening in the east wall that leads up into a natural chimney. It looks like it goes up about 30 feet. Can we fit through that space? No, it's a, it's a natural chimney, so it, oh, it's okay, just okay. kind of like a, a break between. Okay. So let me just draw your kennel. Dead wolf. Dead wolf. <laughs> Why couldn't we have all have gotten a wolf? Oh, you could have. <laughs> Someone would have needed to have at least 10 rations, though. <laughs> I don't know where we could find such a human. Me um, neither. I had to feed five of them to tame this wolf. <laughs> yeah. It would be very... It'd be... <laughs> Murdered two wolves we couldn't get. <laughs> <laughs> Moonhammer demanded. There, that was not a negotiation with Moonhammer. Um, it looks like uh, for <laughs> the two went of you, for it. I was so convinced. You were so confident. <laughs> Butthole doesn't have a lot of doubts. In armor, it'll be a little difficult for you to go up, but uh, very easy for you okay. and probably fairly easy for you okay. to shimmy up this chimney. I'm going to shimmy up. You shimmy up? Can yeah. the dog go up? No. You'd have to like hoist the dog up. Like it's it's you're going to be like sort of splinter selling your way. Okay. Well, these guys start going up. I take the chain. And I, I, like, move stuff around in my backpack, and I use some of my rope, and I make, like, a Bjorn. It's not wide enough for you to bring <laughs> the wolf up in a Bjorn. Bjorn. Why? Around my... Well, I, okay, then I tie it around my waist, and I build it like a... Like a, like a hanging... Like a hanging yeah, thing, okay. so I can carry him up that way. I'm not leaving him behind. Goblin Jr. Well, is my ward. It is the dog of Moonhammer. That's fine. I'm going to climb up. I'm going to... I've got a hammer pythons, and I've got 50 feet of rope, so I will set, like, a rope down for you to climb up. Thank you, Quinn. Okay. I appreciate that. Just as does Moonhammer. Get the dog off of you. <laughs> I unbjorn the dog. We will hoist the dog up. I need you, Quinny, to roll me a um, an athletics check. All right. There's a 15. You start uh, making your way up, and if I understand correctly, you're going to be hammering uh, batons into the wall as you go. I've got 10, so I'm going to use uh, one for like every 10 feet, I guess, like where I'm stopping to check again. At least I've got something to hold on to. Great. So you like... Hammer one into the yeah. into the wall. Cool. All right. Hit it again. Yep. And that was 18, so that's Great. a 17 okay. on. Yep. So you go up one more. Okay. So that's another 14. Great. Yep. So uh, you managed to uh, make it up to the, the lip of the chimney. All right. I want to ha- have a look around, I guess. You edge up into uh, up onto the lip. Mm-hmm. Uh, you look in, and um, you can see there's, a, there's sort of a large fire pit mm-hmm. uh, glowing. Um, and around it, uh, you can see a couple of, uh, of goblins sort of stoking the fire. You can see a wolf that's sort of patrolling around and, uh, against one wall on a large throne, just gnawing on a big fucking hawk of meat, uh, is a giant, 
very grandiose looking bugbear. He's got rings, big rings on each of his fingers. Mm. He's wearing a robe. He looks like he's got like a shitty crown that he probably made out of garbage. Okay. Um, and he's, you know, like he's got a drink in one hand, he's got his meat and, uh, you know, he's yelling at the goblins to keep the fire going. Okay. They don't look like they've seen you. Is there anything for me to secure the rope to without making the sound of hammering a python into... Uh, no. But because they're, they're kind of having revels, yeah. um, you get the sense that they didn't hear the All ones right. on the way up. Let's, let's risk putting a python in to secure that rope. Okay. So you're kind of like watching, you're gauging what's going on. Yeah. Uh, and you notice that one of the goblins kind of slips and accidentally kicks a coal that uh, almost hits the dog, like mm. hits the wolf. And suddenly the bugbear is up on his feet. He's like, you little fucking idiot. You almost hit Ripper. Uh, and when he's yelling, Ripper. you're like, that's my chance. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, so you get the sense that because he's yelling and then uh, you see the bugbear, he wanders over. He grabs the goblin and he just fucking faces him into the, the fire and just holds him there as he screams and burns until eventually he stops moving. And then he uh, turns to the goblin next to him and he's like, take this one out of here. <laughs> So I was marking on my forearm, like, how many goblins there were. I just scratched one of the marks. Listen, <laughs> <laughs> Listen Hans, I know you've got him and yeah, this exactly. Guy. So the goblin picks up his, uh, his dead friend, and you can see he's, like, clearly shocked, but also this seems like it's a thing that happens, but he's, like, pretty roughed up by it. His friend just died. He starts dragging him towards the chimney. I'm going to slide down the rope. Slide down the rope? Yeah. Okay. So um, I think you can just do that. That seems like a thing you can do. Okay. And as soon as I get out, I want to fill these guys in on what's going on. I catch him like he's falling because I'm there to spot him. <laughs> yep, yep. So you catch shush, him. Shush. And I look over at Goblin Jr. and I put like my finger over my <laughs> lips and he gets it. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So you guys kind of hang there. Uh, you explain what's going on. What do you guys want to do? Okay. It sounds like we got a dead guy coming down the tubes. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, so a corpse is coming down. That's great. So why don't we wait for the body to fall? We got this rope. You're yeah. sneaky. You go up, go up first. first. Yeah. Alan follows second. I'll go third, and I'll have Goblin Junior tied to me in like a very comfortable sling. Okay. Then when we get to the top, I think things will already have started happening once you get to the top. Uh, yeah, but yeah. I would say right off the top, here's here's my two cents. Yeah, uh, take your shot at Clark. The yeah, he's bear. up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like hit him, hit him with yours right away if you need to. Hit him with your acid if you can. And then if they all run mm -hmm. at you and I'm not at the top yet, just come back down the rope. What are they going to do? Come down a rope one at a time. We kick their ass down here. That sounds pretty good. Like yes. fuck this Clark guy. All right. Moonhammer <laughs> says when you strike the head from the snake's body, fuck that snake. <laughs> Fart on it. Fuck the snake. Got it. <laughs> so. We wait for the corpse Sorry, to come down. Sorry, I gave the thumbs up. Okay. Oh, there <laughs> we go. He's like doing like <laughs> motions here. Like. Laura was doing an in-person thumbs up. <laughs> Great. So um, sure enough, uh, after a few seconds, the body comes tumbling down. Um, it uh, kind of like bounces off one of the walls. Mm. Um, you hear from up top, bye, buddy. <laughs> um, I like Goblin Jr. eat some of the body. <laughs> uh, the goblin hits Pace the ground. Goblin, yeah. Yeah, so you can drag you can drag it out. You can try and feed it to uh, Goblin Junior. Goblin Junior seems like you just had a big meal. Hmm. Um, but I, uh, do you know what? I'm just gonna pet Goblin Junior. Like I'm just gonna like ruffle his fur and make sure he looks cool. <laughs> yeah, no, he looks up. badass. Now. And I, I'm working on the sling. Like I got some like rope and some backpack. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure he's super comfy. It's not like a shitty one where he's gonna be freaked out. Like he's like <laughs> cool with it. Okay. All right, I'm going back up. Yeah, the roll rope. me uh, roll me a check, please. That's eleven. Great. Yeah. So yep. very easy. Okay. Not a problem to get back up. Um, I'm following next. Yeah. Yep. Well, I mean, you're keeping an eye on the room, right? Because yeah, they start doing shit. It'll once take I'm a up shot. there, yeah. has everything kind of gone back to normal? He's back on his chair or whatever. Yeah, he's back on his chair. Um, it seems the uh, you know, the the one remaining goblin is uh, you know, he's he's trying to keep the fire going, but also like deliver more food and mm. you know keep the he's keeping the you know he's roasting things on sticks and okay. like bringing them over. Um, you get the sense that the goblin is is really overworked now. This is yeah. really a two goblin kind of gig. Got it. Uh, so, so I'm looking at my forearm, looking at the number of guys in the room. I've got one for bugbear, one for goblins and one for wolf. Yep. Uh, okay. So I guess, uh, in my dark robes that I've got on, I'm going to try to stealthily kind of close in on old, uh, Clark. All right. Roll me a hardcore stealth check. Eight plus seven. So I think 15. Damn. Should remember the plan where we discussed waiting. Now we got him sneaking towards a fucking wolf. <laughs> That's a bold ass choice. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be in the right position when it's you okay. come up. It's okay. I like it. I yeah. like it a lot. I don't want to be near you at the hole when the big clanging farting <laughs> man comes up <laughs> with a wolf strapped to him. I don't want to be near that action. <laughs> I'm not going to fart on the way up. I'm trying to be sneaky. I'll only fart if I really need to to have the strength to get over to the like lip. Propel yourself up the <laughs> chimney. So um, you enter. Yeah, Just you enter the room. Set it on fire. 
And um, there's enough, it, it seems like there's a lot of provisions and stuff that have been kind of stacked around. So you're actually finding a number of good, uh, good opportunities. Um, Clark looks like he's really distracted being magnanimous and hmm. like yelling orders. Um, you can tell even not knowing too much about uh, Clark or bugbears that this guy seems to have a real weird sense of his like entitlement. Like he's, he's set it up like a little tiny throne room and you right. can kind of get the sense that he's, he enjoys ordering people around and that's what he's really tied up doing. You managed to successfully make it to um, almost within striking distance, like one more, one more move in. You think you can probably get to him okay. uh, on his throne. However, as you do, and you get in behind some barrels, you suddenly notice Ripper the wolf kind of stop and start like sniffing around and kind of looking. Mm. So roll me a stealth check to avoid the, the wolf's attention. Uh, an 18. You see the wolf kind of sniffs, looks confused, and then it kind of paws over to the fire mm. and starts like sniffing around and Clark's like, damn it, Ripper, no, no, we told you, no more goblin, no more goblin. Goblin is good for killing, good for beating, but not good for eating. Remember the rhyme, Ripper. <laughs> <laughs> the wolf kind of looks up at him and he's like, Ripper understands. Ripper's the only one who understands Clark. <laughs> Oh, Clark's so lonely. And the goblin kind of looks up. He's like, shut up, goblin. Back to tending. <laughs> um, but clearly the fire is, is is a bit of a problem. So, like, you know, uh, the goblin kind of shoes Ripper away. Ripper growls at it mm. and kind of stalks off. Um, and uh, business goes back to usual. All right. I'm going to hold there. I'm waiting All for right, our next. So yeah. I, uh, I'm i going to use stealth as well because I'm, yep. not, I'm not in my dark clothing, but I'm going to try <laughs> to climb up really quietly. Yep. In cases where you're not running under a huge time limit, you can also just take a 10, which is just being like, I'm going to take my time based on the fact that even though he's kind of in danger, you know, it's not like there's a ticking clock. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd say you can take 10 and since there's a rope, that's fine. So All right. you, you uh, make it up, uh, but uh, it will hinder your stealth slightly. So please roll me okay. to uh, uh, still check at disadvantage. 13. Okay, great. So uh, you managed to make it up. Um, you're, you feel you're very lucky that, uh, that they are not, listening for anything or paying much attention. You feel like if they were, you'd be fucked. <laughs> uh, yes, so you manage to make it up and kind of like quickly sort of scrabble in behind some barrels. Uh, here comes the big one, though. Oh, yeah. I'm going to be you a... Have still got um, the torch in your hand? Oh, I definitely set the torch down. I'm not climbing okay. up with a giant lit torch. That would. I got my short sword completely. out. Like, I'm ready yep. for ready, when ready, this ready hurricane for of farts and metal comes <laughs> so up So I'm going to be... As quiet as I can be, being a giant man in armor, climbing ropes with a dog strapped to him. All right, roll me an athletic check. <laughs> I'm realizing at this point I should have been like, you two go up the rope, I'll go in the front. <laughs> ah, flaws. Just flawed planning. 17. So you're able to make it up without much difficulty. It's a little noisy, but you're also, because you're kind of the size of this thing, you're just kind of like using your back to kind of like wedge your way up. It's so not it's like scraping, it's not clanging. Uh, it's it's scraping, but almost, yeah, I, I think you're able to do it not super quietly, but also not as loudly as like... As any of us would have expected. <laughs> <laughs> um, Even Goblin Jr. is like, good for you. <laughs> uh, so that being said, um, once you start getting up closer to the top, uh, Clark starts looking around and he's like, what the fuck is that noise? Does he say that? Because I would hold still. <laughs> yeah, so they all, they all wait. Like, the wolf, obviously, still just doing wolf things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then he's like, ah, it must be nothing. He start climbing again. He's like, seriously, what the fuck is that sound? And he's like, uh, he points at the goblin. He's like, did that other idiot get stuck down there? Go check it out. So he's worried that the corpse got stuck in the chimney on the way down. So the other goblin's shoulders kind of slump, and he starts wandering nice. How, cl how close the to the lip am I? Oh, you're, you're like right up there for dramatic purposes. Oh, baby. Nice. All right. So I'm just going to wait. And when he comes to there, I'm going to grab him by the neck and I'm going to chuck him down the thing beside me. Right. If, if big guy there, Clark, tries anything, I'm going to run out and give him a little stabby. Clark, now not having anyone to boss around for a moment or two, decides that now might be an appropriate time to relieve himself. So he gets up and uh, just, you know, lets loose on a wall. So he's just uh, taking a piss next to his throne there. Um, <laughs> Classy guy. Classy guy. <laughs> Clargy guy. <laughs> the uh, the goblin makes it to the lip. All right. I'm just going to grab his ass. Okay. Chuck uh, him down the well. So I need you to roll me a Can uh, he fit a strength beside check? you? We're about to find out. <laughs> well, listen, he's going beside me whether he fit. He'll fit if I hit him enough. <laughs> Uh, 19 plus one is 20. Uh, so you grab him, and in the moment that he's grabbed, uh, he slips, and he, you have great purchase. And even though it is difficult and might involve dislocating his shoulder, you manage to well throttling him so he can't scream. Just fucking punch stuff him down through your legs. 
Um, <laughs> and as he's struggling, like Goblin Jr.'s like nipping at his face. Yeah, fuck yeah. <laughs> and then that's uh, why I made that harness so comfortable. You can fuck a guy just up. Just imagine this Goblin like. It can't get any worse than this as he's like his throat is collapsing and he's being like crammed down beside a <laughs> he's metal going man. Down by my and then he ass sees and a just, there's just there. a dog hanging. You're like, oh, <laughs> Jesus. Uh, yep. So uh, with one final mighty push, you uh, you managed to punch the goblin through your legs. Uh, and he uh, he, sa- he sails to the bottom uh, with a sickening crunch. You can't talk shit about acid nice. spray anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I did that for you. <laughs> okay, so I will try to climb the rest of the way up into sure. the space. So you're able to do that. Uh, the two of you are in the room with Clark and the wolf. What do you do? So I'm going to lean down and unhook Goblin Jr. from his, like, tied apparatus. up tied up apparatus. And, I mean, we can't talk because we're all in this sneaky room, so yeah. I'm going to make a plan without talking to these guys at yeah, all no, and just hope fine. it works. Yeah. So I'm going to I'm going to sneak out from behind the barrels and, mm-hmm. and, and try to get to the kind of closest pile uh, sure. to, to Clark. Uh, nine. Uh, OK, so pretty much as soon as you step out, the wolf looks up oh, shit. and I'm going to ready an action on Clark where I'm going to run out and stab him with my short sword as soon as he becomes aware of what's going on. Basically, sorry, I should have drawn this out for you earlier. To describe this for our auditory listeners, yeah. I'm just going to say rectangular for the sake of it. If south is one of the short ends, we're there. The far end is where the throne is, and to the left is the stairs. The wolf is in front of the stairs on the left, and Clark is by his throne at the back yeah, end. The, the throne and the and the garbage or goblin disposal are at opposite ends of the room. I'm assuming I'm closest to the throne. Yes, I've moved, so I've made you're, the, the you're basically up. within Assassin's Creeding range. Cool, of, and of I fully plan to Assassin's Creed this guy. So um, let's roll initiative. Uh, does lucky happen with initiative rolls? Oh, nope. Okay, so uh, I have four initiative. I have 13. 12. So um, the wolf starts growling mm-hmm. um, upon seeing a, you know, a half-elf just kind of randomly sneak out of the, the uh, lurch out. And Clark is like, what is it, Ripper? What is it, boy? And he turns around just as he's sort of finishing, so he sprays an arc. <laughs> and he's like, oh, intruders, you dare barge in on me, that sounds King like my Clark? Does he see all of us, or does he just see the one intruder? Uh, just sees her. Just me. Cool. Yep. Um, with one hand, he's stuffing himself back in his pants. With his other <laughs> one, he grabs a javelin, and uh, he's throwing it with his off hand because, you know, he was using the other one to, to repack. And all of a sudden, out of the shadows... Yeah, halfling. little halfling. Yeah. Fucking running with a short Great. sword. All right, so sneak attack uh, at advantage. All right. Ooh, that's a one, so with lucky, we'll roll that again. <laughs> and it's a three. Oh, God. Hey, plus five, so 19. Great, so you hit... Ooh, yeah, a six and a three plus another three, so I'm doing 12. 12, a mighty hit. Out of nowhere, halfling, like, fully 300s up the, oh, the yeah, box of garbage. Absolutely. And jumps in you. You just you dig your blade deep into his neck, and he screams in rage um, and uh, fumbles the fumbles the javelin. If I'm, if I'm up, like, hanging off of his neck, I lean in and I whisper in his ear, King Clark is a stupid name. Great. And he sho- <laughs> so he shoves you back off. Um, that's awesome. He seems tremendously enraged and gently embarrassed. So he shoves you off, so now you're just kind of in yeah. front of him. Yeah. He uh, drops his javelin, um, and instead he uh, reaches down to beside his throne, which is next to him, and he picks up a very, very angry-looking morning star. Oh, buddy. And it points at you. He's like, King Clark, great name. <laughs> your name, dumb name. Whatever your name is. Unless it's King Clark, in which case it's a great name, like mine. <laughs> He's going full macho, man. <laughs> so, uh, Butthole, you're up. Awesome. So the first thing I'm going to do is unharness, you know, that last little click. Because when I got up, I started it. So it's just like off the leash. And I'm just like, fuck him up. <laughs> and then I look out at uh, King Clark, King Clark, King Clark. Clark. motherfucker standing over my halfling <laughs> friend. And I just squat down and I go, blue flame. <laughs> And I squeeze out a fart and it fucking swoops over my head and my Warhammer <laughs> fucking sparks it into a blue fucking fireball flying at that dickhead. Excellent. You, you fire a tremendous blast of blue flame at him uh, and much to your horror, he just goes, I love it. <laughs> God. Uh, however, there is something that is different now. Uh, there's someone else in the initiative order. Goblin uh, fucking Junior! <laughs> <laughs> With a howl, uh, Goblin Junior sprints with uh, with great speed 
at uh, at Ripper and yeah, uh, fuck yeah, I, th- I hope he would because he's attacking with advantage because one dog was not ready for two dogs. <laughs> Goblin Junior is unleashed. He runs growling across the uh, the floor, leaps at Ripper. Uh, and in classic, uh, you know, wolves fighting in a movie fashion, Ripper turns and like kind of goes up on his haunches, but he is taken unaware. And Goblin Jr., despite having just eaten a good meal, goes straight for the throat. And with the power of Moonhammer, rips Ripper's oh, throat fuck from his body yes! and proceeds to just like savagely flail the wolf's body against the ground. And then farts. Yeah. And I, 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 and oh, I, dog farts. I, I look to the, I look to the other two people in this room and go, see, I like that dog. <laughs> Ripper's done. Ripper's done. Oh, Jesus yeah, Christ. Christ. Ripper. I rolled really well as Goblin Jr. Well, he rolled <laughs> a tremendous amount of damage. <laughs> Rip Ripper then. This could not have worked out better for me. <laughs> Bad news. All right. Great. Uh, dog of Moonhammer indeed. All right. How, how close am I to, to Clark right now? Probably about 15 feet. I'm going to move in to, mm-hmm. to within to 10 feet of him. Great. And I'm going to cast a poison spray. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So uh, tell me about poison spray. Basically, I, I, I extend my hand towards Clark and, and there's a puff of noxious gas that emanates from my palm. Moonhammer stuff. Um, right, right, right <laughs> towards him. Great. Uh, must succeed on a constitution saving throw or take 1d12 poison damage. Okay, so he he uh, having just inhaled, he's you know deeply inhaling of uh, of some blue flame. Unfortunately, that means when you throw poison spray at him, he's still just going. <laughs> so uh, he he just sucking fucking sucks that right up. So roll uh, roll nice. some damage. Twelve. Yeah, huge. <laughs> Clark could fucking suck it. <laughs> And I yell, hey, how does that fart taste now, you piece of shit? <laughs> Clark can't hear you. Clark's throat burning. Uh, Matt, yeah, you can you, talk. You heard me. You, you fuck him up good and proper. <laughs> That's a hell of a turn. All right. Um, that <laughs> brings us to I'm Quinny. I'm contributing so much. <laughs> you are. <laughs> Coming in again with a short sword. Great. Do it up. Plus five, 18. I okay, yell just hit. as he's swinging. Oh, shit. We don't know where the dwarf is. <laughs> <laughs> I can still decide if this is a knockout blow or not. That's uh, why I had to yell fast. Yeah. <laughs> Five plus three, eight. Did you want to knock out him? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll like hamstring him or something. Okay, so yeah, sure. You uh, you cut out his his hamstring. He he falls to his knees, uh, coughs up more blood from the poison that's inside him, and just kind of like falls to one hand. He's like, "Why, why do you not respect King Clark?" And then he sees Ripper, and he's like, "Good dog," and he <laughs> oh. falls over. Okay, so I'm going to cross over to yeah. Goblin Jr. and, like, pat the shit out of that dog. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. He I, I'm going to, like, I'm giving, I'm giving him a, a ration as well. <laughs> I'm giving him some yeah, he, he doesn't need any. He's got a mouthful of ripper. Fair no, enough. I'm like, he's just getting, like, the biggest hug in the world. Yeah, yeah. He's and getting chin scratches from like, great. Yeah, I'm, I'm all over this dog. Like, uh, so happy. Also, I, I immediately, like, we're out of danger mode. Yep. I case the joint. Like, what's going on in here? What kind of loot we got going on? Cool. So uh, there's a larger opening that leads north down a natural set of stone steps. Uh, you can hear the roar of falling water echoing up from beyond. Uh, the fire pit's still smoldering. Uh, around there are piles of sacks and crates, uh, a lot of which you were using for cover. Most of them are marked with an image of a blue lion. Hidden amongst the supplies, there is an unlocked treasure chest belonging to Clark. Uh, inside the treasure chest, there are 600 copper pieces, 110 silver pieces, two potions of healing, and a jade statuette of a frog with tiny gold orbs for eyes that you think is probably worth about 40 gold piece- pieces. Guys, we got a chest with two potions in it. Uh, <laughs> I think <laughs> I think, uh, I think, think Alan and I should probably have those just in case trusty oh, cleric here can't, totally can't fine. us yep. up. Yeah? Agreed. Okay. All right. P- pass me one of those, Quinny. Yep. Here we go. Boo. There goes a potion. Uh, I reach into into Ripper and I pull out a bone and I, I give it to Goblin Junior. So he has like a bone to play with. <laughs> Goblin Junior seems pretty into that. Nice. So having just lied to my co adventurers, mm-hmm. can I take the the rest of those coins? Like six hundred copper pieces. Is, that's a lot. That's a lot. Oh, okay. So I'm like, oh, a secret compartment. Kachunk, kachunk. Guys, there's six hundred copper pieces in here. <laughs> yeah, uh, as well as 110 silver pieces. So, no silver pieces though. <laughs> Uh, and you can pocket the statue. Okay. Uh, I want to go open up uh, some of the containers that have the blue symbol on them. I want to know what's in those. They look like just sort of standard uh, goods that might be shipped in and out of a town uh, like um, Fandolin. Um, you don't recognize the logo, but they do seem to be kind of a standard merchant's supply stuff. So, you know, it's like spices and 
you know, there's some rations. Um, there's like silks in one of them, like just various stuff. Um, with your cart, you could probably load this shit up on the cart. Okay. All right. So I go over to uh, Goblin Junior because I'm like so pumped up. He's oh, got yeah. his awesome bone. Like he's he's like a hero. So I make him like a like a sick collar. Like I do. You want to use Clark's crown to make it? Hell yeah! I want to use Clark's <laughs> crown to make it. So I make him a collar, and then I got like a like a leash, so we can go. And then we just walk over to that fucking unconscious bugbear, and I look around in his throne. And just, he probably has a cup or something. He's a drunk asshole. Mm, yeah. And I go over to the cup, uh, and I scoop up some pee. Maybe <laughs> peed on that wall, and I throw I it in his face. <laughs> oh, yeah. Can I also help in waking him up and also... Oh, yeah. I'm going to cut off a scrap of uh, ripper hide, use it uh, as kind of like a oven mitt, pick up a coal, and then just kind of shove it on his neck to cauterize the wound <laughs> and also wake him up. Quinny's a bad motherfucker, guys. <laughs> so he's awake. Yeah, so he, he wakes up uh, screaming and... And I look at him and I'm like, I'm sorry, the pee seems really <laughs> petty after the neck burning thing like that. <laughs> I tried to go light with this. So he wakes up screaming and just fucking swats you because you didn't tie him up or do anything. You take six points of damage as he roars and starts struggling to his feet. <sighs> I just... Punch Fair. him square in his fucking dumb face. <laughs> I a, uncorked that healing attack. potion. <laughs> <laughs> One. Okay. Punch myself. <laughs> you attempt to punch him. He grabs you by the hand and throws you with tremendous strength. And do you know what? Thank God I brought Goblin Jr. into this, guys, because we have the one capable team member yes. left. Roll me a, roll Acid me, spray! Roll me a, uh, a dexterity save. Kill him. <laughs> One. Yep, that's what I thought. Okay, uh, so you're <laughs> thrown into the fire pit. Great. Uh, you take five points of fire damage. Guys, we got to tie these guys up next time. He's still all, like, fucked up and bloody. He's just, like, raging in kind of a small, like, he's on his knees. He's, like, oh. swatting at you. Goblin Jr. is not going to take for well his All right. Goblin Jr. was right beside me, so he's left. Goblin Jr. leaps on him, does what Goblin Jr. does best, oh, no. and rips out his throat. <laughs> Great. Can I, you put the throat back in? No, no, no. I roll out of the fire. I stand up and I go over and pat the dog. And I'm like, you did so good. <laughs> like, you did so good. I turn to the rest of the room and I'm like, Moonhammer meant for him to die. And do you know what? Keeping him alive, Moonhammer showed us our hubris. <laughs> That's why I am burned. All right. And then I take the dog. To Goblin like, Jr. happily munches <laughs> on the esophagus. Yeah. And then I take, the, I take Goblin Jr. over to like the corner and I eat a bar of rations. And we both lay down and take a quick nap. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm going to take a quick rest while they do whatever else they're doing in this room. And I rolled eight. So I'm back to full health. We got to find our dwarf buddy. Yeah. Let's maybe look for evidence. Like if they were saying that like Clark was playing with him, maybe he was playing with him in this room. I'm right? saying we check the staircase yeah. at the back. We start searching the rest of the cave to find our dwarf friend. We'll stick together. We got a torch. And I'll potion it out. I light one of my torches from the fire in the middle of the room. Mm -hmm. And well, then... I'm, I'm looking for, like, marching orders, like, from King Grawl or the Black mm. Spider. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does okay. he have, so, like... Yep. If you search his... Uh, if you search, sort of, like, pat him down, you find uh, a message on him from King Grawl that says, Clark, new orders. Pick up dwarf. Pick up human. Send dwarf to me. You keep human. Do what you will. Black Spider say so, so you do it, or I come down there and kill you all. Love and kisses, grow. Oh, Okay, so we also go tells search. Us the dwarf isn't here. Yeah, we gotta go search for the human then. Well, I mean, do we, do we really care about him? <laughs> we owe Carmine a favor. Yeah, all right. I don't remember why I do. What's I don't remember name? what I did. Sildar. Sildar. Didn't Sildar. Even remember He's got the, the toy name. armor. He's adorable. So coming down into, uh, into, you come down into a sort of a large room. Uh, it's a cavern that's half filled with two large pools of water. Uh, there's a narrow waterfall high in the eastern wall that feeds the pool, which drains out the western end of the chamber to form the steam that comes out, and, or the stream, rather, that flows out of the cave mouth below. There are small walls that serve as dams holding the water in, which you get the sense could be easily triggered if someone wanted to cause a flood. There are two smaller passages uh, that lead out. It's very echoey in there. Uh, you see three goblins sitting around, but they all seem to have like, put their weapons down and are kind of pressed against a wall, looking rather concerned at you as you come in. Goblin Jr. starts growling at Yeah, him. let's show off the crown. Like, yeah, I give, I, give Goblin, is dead. I give Goblin Jr. a little bit of a lead so we can sort of get a little closer to him and intimidate him with his like dogly awesomeness. Yep, so the goblins are like, hey man, it's cool. You know, we didn't even like him. We didn't even like Clark. Where's the, where's the human? Oh, uh, yeah, the human. Yeah, of course you'd like the human. You guys like humans, right? That's the thing you do? There's a place we all sleep, okay? He's in the place we all sleep. It's back that way. Yemek is taking care of him. They're, they're, they're having some fun with him. Um, but uh, listen, man, we don't want any trouble, okay? We didn't even like Clark. Moonhammer says you're cool, but leave. 
Okay, okay. You this know what? cave is no one's you know, now. That, that that's great. That's that's totally fair. You know, that's very yeah. And they just fucking bolt. Okay, so we turn around and follow their directions. You come into a passageway um, that's dimly lit, just like everything else. Uh, as you make your way across uh, along the passageway, you can start to hear the sounds of like goblins laughing and kind of like yelling things to each other, as well as a human occasionally screaming. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and stealth it up in there. Okay, so roll me a stealth check, please. Fifteen. So you stealth right up to uh, the edge of sort of a large room. Mm. Um, seems to be sort of a cave within the cave, as it were. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a large cave. It's divided in half by a ten foot high escarpment. So it's kind of a little bit up. There's a natural staircase that leads up to it. Uh, the air is hazy with the smoke of a cooking fire, the pungent smell of poorly cured hides and unwashed goblins. Uh, some of the goblins appear to be playing dice um, and kind of up on the upper level, you can see human who's strapped to a wall uh, and every so often a dagger will bounce off the wall near him. I look down at Goblin Jr. and I put a finger over my lips where I'm like, shh, like I did earlier when he mm. totally got it and he gets <laughs> He it. holds up a paw to his... <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I fucking love this wolf. <laughs> All right, let's. I'm gonna. I'm gonna push in. I'm gonna sneak. Sneak in. How many goblins are we looking at? It looks like there are uh, four goblins playing dice. Uh, two of them are cooking stuff on the fire, and uh, there's someone throwing daggers. I lean over to Alan and I go, Alan. Hey. I know I've said negative things about this for a long time, but I see four goblins playing dice about to kill a man. It may be time for some acid. <laughs> I can take up to two guys at a time with acid. I want to sneak up to the dagger goblin. He seems to be far away from everyone. All right. So okay, and I'll get if the, I can take I'll get him the two silently, that are together. everyone else down in the group wouldn't know he's gone. I'm going to, the, the two that are together. Okay. All right. And Goblin Jr. and I get ready because we're like, when shit goes down, yeah, you gotta get we're in both there, making yeah. a run on those four at that table. So because you're on the lower level with all these guys, you, you got to sneak past all the people who are busy. Roll. Okay. So roll a, roll a stealth check. 14. So the goblins are pretty distracted. Uh, okay. The game is getting very good. Mm. Um, and because, you know, there's just the central fire, sneaking around in the shadows, particularly for a halfling, isn't really that hard. That's what I'm hoping for. Uh, so you edge your way over, and you're able to peer up over mm-hmm. the, the lip um, by jumping because you're small mm. and kind of, like, hoisting yourself up. Um, and you can see uh, a particularly well-equipped goblin. You know, he's, he's got some leather armor on. Oh, shit, okay. Uh, he's got a bracer of knives, um, and he's smoking a pipe, and he's just like, Oh, human, oh, yeah, such a big human. Oh, such nice armor, huh? How do you think about this? And he whips a dagger. At this rate, there's no way to communicate with these two because I'm too far ahead, right? Mm-hmm. And Alan, you're still standing by? I'm standing by, ready to go. Yeah, I'm waiting for somebody to make their move because yeah. I'm a pretty blunt object in this combat. <laughs> and the acid splash will not go unnoticed for very long. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it. Let's let's do this. Yeah. So I, I have to scramble up then. Yep. My aim is to basically fire off a shot and then bring him back down to the action where you guys are. Let's do it up. So 18. 18. All right, that'll hit. Not great. Plus three, eight. So he puts his pipe in his mouth. He goes to throw another dagger. Suddenly you scrabble up, quick draw, fire a shot. Um, it uh, punches straight through his throat. You see a puff of smoke come out of it as he uh, had a lungs full of smoke. And he just kind of turns and looks at you in shock, drops to his knees and falls forward dead. Goblins have seven HP. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought he was like serious business with his pipe and shit. <laughs> like, oh, damn. We're not in combat then. I, I look up to see where Quinny is. He's giving me yeah, a signal. Okay. And I point at him. And then I point at Goblin Jr. <laughs> and then I do that like two fingers to my eyes and two fingers to his eyes and two fingers to Goblin Jr. <laughs> and then I point at the card game. I lean over to Alan and I'm like, the moment you get the card, guys. I'm like, pointing back and forth yeah. from us. I'm pointing yeah. at Alan. And I'm like, she's going to. And then I pointed at the two goblins hanging on. I'm like, she's going to acid them. And like, I'm dissolving an acid really horrifyingly. Uh, and You've then, had some experience watching that. Yeah, and then I pointed at the, the other three of us. And I'm like, we'll go at the card game. And then I pointed at Quinny. And I'm like, you can shoot because you're far away. Yeah. And we'll just run in. I'm just going to put up like two seconds. Like two seconds hand. Okay, okay. yep, yep. Yeah. We're going to wait for two seconds. I go over and check out Sildar. He seems pretty roughed up. Turns out the goblin throwing daggers, not that bad a shot. Oh, man. Um, he's just kind of drifting in and out of consciousness, but he's alive. Okay, we got to end this quick. That's like what I know. I come back and I'm like, thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> right. And immediately I hurl a bubble of acid at those two goblins. The goblins are like turning... And I'm like, no, 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 you gotta, you gotta turn it counterclockwise first, otherwise you just scorch. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> there's just a blast of acid, and um, one of them just, like, full-on Nazi at the end of uh, Indiana Jones, just, like, 
puddles. The other guy screams, trips, falls into the fire, mouth open, face first, kind of so like... So much mouth burn in this <laughs> game. I love it. Writhing and, and dying horribly. And the, the people playing dice are like, would you guys keep it down? We're playing a, oh my God! Butthole, you're that's, up! That's your cue. Simultaneously, yeah, so we're running and Quinny's shooting. So we, Goblin Jr. and I break into a sprint towards them. I've got my war hammer... And I'm just, I'm just going to fuck a dude up. I, 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 under my breath as I'm sprinting, I go, it's been a long time coming, but it's hammer time. And then I take a swing at one of those fucking goblins. All right. Roll your attack. 18. Yep. That'll do. Eight damage. You knock his head off like it was <laughs> T-ball. Goblin T-ball. His friends scream in horror. <laughs> Meanwhile, outside the cave, Goblin's sitting there with his hand behind his head. He's like... You think the clouds ever look down back at us? Invisible servant is just still sitting there as a floating dagger. And he's like, you know what I like about you? You listen. <laughs> back to the cave. Uh, the goblin junior leaps at, uh, at one of the goblins uh, and he grabs him by the throat. And uh, he does what goblin junior does best. <laughs> For the record, wolves, very powerful. <laughs> we could Yay! have had three of these things. No, no, no. But imagine, three of them, they could have turned on each other. They could have turned on us. One, we have the dog of Moonhammer. This is sick. Tyler, you were waiting to shoot, right? Yes. 17 plus 5 is enough. Yes, that will do. Side note, it turns out I've been over-rolling damage for the wolf by a considerable margin. Guys, I'm so okay with that. <laughs> I did uh, 7 damage. Great, yep. Short so you, you you shoot him shoot him right in his cold, dead goblin heart. We just killed five goblins instantaneously. There's still one. There's still one. No, but I'm, I'm yep. just I'm oh, proud of our yeah. kill ratio. You are, you are killing. You are killing. Wait, sorry, who's left? Yep. Um, one there's guy, one more guy dice, the dice guy who is just like playing cards. Oh. oh, he's dropped his his weapons and he's just like, okay. oh, please, like, please don't. Don't even have to enter. Please don't. Initiative and he surrenders. That's please fantastic. Don't. All my friends are dead. Please, please. I look at Goblin. I have a dog. I look at Goblin Junior. I have a dog named Dave. Trust me, you don't have a dog named Dave anymore. <laughs> what happened to Dave? I say, it's, <laughs> you know what's cool. I, I read Link Goblin Junior on his leash, and I'm like, man, I'm sorry about Dave. Like that's <laughs> that's on me. That's okay. If you let me go, I'll forgive you. Maybe I don't know. Maybe some therapy will help. Does anybody want to murder this Goblin, or are we do, good? Do you know? Do you know what? We'll we'll let you go if you tell us where our door friend is. Claire explaining wolf murder and a new animal companion. A truly fruitful episode for our heroes. But will the goblin tell them where the dwarf is? Will they murder the goblin out of spite? Will Sildar die of his wounds while they dick around? Listen on to find out. And if you like what you hear, you can follow us at DD and D Podcast on Twitter and Instagram. That's double D A N Double D Podcast. You can also support the show and further our quest through our Patreon at patreon.com slash garbageproductions, or you can visit our website at garbageproductions.net. Not .com. Only a monster uses a .com. We are garbageproductions.net. But more importantly than all that, tune in next time for another episode of Dum Dums and Dragons!